Hey, hey, happy people. So today we are going to be making a um, Cajun chicken Alfredo. I uh, was inspired by for this dish from the Tasty that be on YouTube and Facebook and everywhere. They have a Cajun chicken Alfredo and I thought, well, I want to make one too. And I want it to be alkaline, you know, subliminally they just been... I've been seeing the video, so subliminally now I want Cajun chicken Alfredo. So I'm going to make my own and I'm going to alkaline it. First thing though, I did make my own pasta. I made a spelt pasta, so I'm just going to I'm just going to show you guys the video here so you can see me making the spelt pasta. I did cheat. I used the Phillips machine. But after that, then we'll move on to making our chicken. So stay tuned. Watch the pasta. Watch the intro. And we'll be back with the chicken. Okay, to make our pasta today, I am making spelt pasta and I am using a Phillips pasta maker and I am using the double cup because I need at least a pound of uh, pasta and I am using a fettuccine attachment. So I already have 200 grams here and you do need double cup for both. If you're doing a double batch, if you're only doing a single, then just the 200, but you need 400 grams for a double batch. And you do have to use a scale because the measurements have to be correct. It is very finicky about the measurements. Your pasta will come out too dry or come out squishy. Won't come out the machine at all. Alright. And then you need a hundred and it is 190 ml of liquid. I am using veggie broth with a little sea salt in there to give me some flavor. But you don't put that in yet. Put your top on. And we're doing two, so it's 15 minutes. But it really don't take 15 minutes for a spelt. I don't know why. And we just start adding our liquid here in our little container here. I was already making a uh, spelt pasta earlier, so there's a little bit still off in my uh, machine here. If for some reason you start seeing, just stick to the side, just stop it, open it up move it off and then you can start it over again it's not going to restart the whole process so which for some reason the brown spelt flour always sticks but sometimes when I use the white it doesn't I don't know why and we're just going to stop it for a second push this down off in there anything that's on the side that's just sticking especially in the corners While that's going, I'm going to take a little flour, put it on my surface here. I usually just get a sheet pan for this because trying to do it with a plate just gets too messy. Spread that out so your pasta doesn't stick together. Chop it up like Coke. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> Nothing about chopping up coke. Kind of push this back so y'all can see the pasta when it comes out. I don't know if y'all want me to see that. And here comes our pasta and because I already had started earlier and there were some in there I'm just going to take that off because that's pretty hard and you can cut them to your desired length it does not matter whatever you like what your soul say yes to 
usually by the time I touch the pan I'm good so just toss it in a little flour here so they don't stick together and set them off to the side Some of them will start sticking. It's okay. Alright, and it is all done even though it has like a minute or something left. There is nothing literally left in the chamber. So, you're always going to have a little dough left right there. But at this point I just turn it off. Because there is no point. It's just going to keep going for nothing. And there we go. Spelt pasta. So we're back and now it's time to get started with our chicken. My pasta is just sitting over there drying a little bit, but let's get started with our chicken. We're going to be using today the uh, trumpet mushroom, which is the king garster mushroom. And all I did today was I just cut off the top part and I split it down the middle so it can be more like chicken breast like type of thing. But that's all I did today. And I have two skillets here because we're going to use a pressing technique which I learned from Wicked Kitchen. I don't know why I always want to say Bosch, but I think Bosch did it later, but it was really Wicked Kitchen who used this technique uh, to do it with oyster mushrooms, the uh, brown oyster mushrooms. But I am going to do it today with the trumpet mushrooms. So you do need two skillets. I have one already. You want one to be bigger than the other or at least the same size because you need the smaller one to use to press it down in the inside. So I have my larger one here and I have a little grapeseed oil already in it and I have my heat on like a medium high and over here on this one I just have it on like a medium so that way the bottom of it can um, be heating up too because you want it to cook from both sides while pressing and you're going to need some parchment paper for that so you can put it over your mushroom so you can press it down. If you don't have skillets you can use uh, any saucepans, just make sure you have something heavy to put in it, like some rice or something. My skillet is starting to smoke now, so we're just gonna start putting these in here. And I put them in the slice side down first. Like that. Well, I don't know if he's gonna fit. Woo! And then. I add a little grapeseed oil just on top. I'm going to put a little seasoning on it and I want it to stick. And we're going to put my Cajun seasoning on here. And if you already saw the video, you already have it. But if not, go check the video out and you'll see how to make your alkaline Cajun seasoning. And we're going to be very generous with this because the water from the mushrooms are pretty much going to absorb a lot of the seasoning. We're going to have to double season it like once it's just about done seasoning it, but here too. So very generous with this. And now we're going to add our parchment paper on top. And we're going to put our other skillet on top. And you will need something to hold it down because you need to press it down. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but you can hear that uh, sizzle. That's the water being pressed out. Make sure to rotate your hands so that way you're getting pressure on all sides of your mushrooms. And you just want to press this long enough till you don't really hear the sizzle. You don't see the steam coming out. You can kind of tell that your water is gone. And I just keep rotating my hands. Make sure we get all sides pressed down. Get the water out as much as possible. 
And then you just do a little check. As you can see, there's still liquid there. But, see the oil? And you just want to make sure you're not burning them on the other side. So give them a little look. And they are not. And you just go back to pressing them again. Keeping your uh, heat on the other side so whenever you put your skillet down, it'll continue to stay warm. You do have to be careful because the steam that is coming out of this is very hot. You don't want to burn your arm at all. If for some reason your mushroom soaks up a lot of the oil, just have some oil on the side. So you can just pour a little bit in there as you need it. If for some reason your oil is not, uh, I mean your water is not evaporating fast enough, you can always turn the heat up. But just try not to burn your mushroom. So pay attention to the bottom of your mushroom. Just going to turn my pan around a little bit because... I see there's more liquid on this side than this side, so that means it's not completely flat surface. And it'll give this one time to heat up a little bit more on the bottom. And you just want to roll that around so you can get rid of that water. And get your oil under there. Make sure they're not sticking to the bottom. And I'm going to go with one more press here before I turn it. Because like a spear, hear that sizzle. Okay. And now we're going to flip these bad boys and season the other side. A nice good press. Starting to brown. Just going to add a little more seasoning to the other side. Be generous with your seasoning, like I say. Usually Cajun chicken is has a lot of seasoning on it. Plus you're going to lose seasoning while it's cooking. You want your mushroom to absorb a lot. Alright, again we're just going to put this back on top. And put our other pan on top. And just continue to press. Alright, so we're going to turn them over one more time. Put a little bit more oil in here. So now our, all our water is gone. And I've blackened those too, so... Now you can turn in your second skillet off because we're not going to use it anymore. Okay, at this point, it's what texture you like. So just kind of press on your mushrooms. If it's a texture you like, you can uh, take it off. But if it's not, I would just turn down your heat and just wait for a texture that you like. Whether you want it to be a little firmer or not. For me, this is good. I want it to be more like chicken breast with a little uh, texture to it. I don't want it to be tough. So now we're just going to take these out. Turn this off. And there you are. That's our chicken for our Cajun dish. So now I'm just going to put these in the oven. Oops. Yeah. I'm just going to put these in the oven. Clean this up. Get ready for act two here so we can start actually putting our dish together. So be right back. Okay, so we're back. I'm all set up here. So first thing we're going to do is we need to actually take the oil and the seasonings from our skillet and put it in a pot here. I know that Tasty's is a one pot dish, but we can't do one pot, pot because I wanted my mushroom to cook right. And we're going to get this going and I'm going to add just a little bit more of our grapeseed oil so we can cook down our veggies. Okay, so our pot has come up to temp, so now we're going to add, I have three tablespoons of, uh, no, 
three teaspoons of mock garlic or alkaline mock garlic. Alkaline mock garlic. Uh, if you don't know how to make this, you can check out my video on this. I already have one up for this. And we're just going to add this in here. Give it a little stir in here. And here I have one whole yellow onion, one whole green bell pepper, one red and one yellow bell pepper, one whole one. And I have about three sprigs of uh, fresh green onions. We're just going to add that. And we're going to cook our vegetables down here. Alright, so our vegetables are have cooked down here and we are all ready. So now I'm just going to add a few sprigs of uh, thyme, thyme as people like to call it, but just a few sprigs of fresh thyme because I got it and I want to use it. Any fresh product that I have, I try to squeeze it in almost anything. <laughs> Don't need to waste it. Get all your money's worth of whatever you have. Don't let anything go bad. You can't use it right then. Dehydrated, freeze it. One of the two. Get that in there. And now we're gonna add just a little salt. You just need a little pinch. Not too much because you do, you are going to use your Cajun seasoning, so I'm just going to go with one tablespoon. But put how much ever you like, you know, test it, taste it, whatever so say yes to. Alright, now we're going to add our milk. You need six cups of milk. I have right now a mix of uh, walnut milk and hemp seed milk because... I didn't have six cups of either, so I just mixed them together. My walnut milk is a little denser. Like I say, whenever I'm cooking, I said this before in another video about uh, not uh, using so much water when you're making milk to cook with because usually with regular milk, it's a little thicker than your uh, homemade milks at home. So less water, so it'll be a little thicker. You get more of the pulp uh, in there, things like that. So we're going to add six cups of milk. First four, and two more. And we're going to whisk this all together. Get all your seasonings up in there good. And we're going to let this come to a boil. And once it's a boil, then we're at our pasta. Okay, so our uh, sauce has started boiling here. So now we're just going to add some parsley this is about three tablespoons of parsley you don't like your parsley to be so fresh you can add it in when you're adding in your uh, milk and stuff so it'll boil down all right and I have here in the uh, tasty video they have one pound of pasta but their pasta is dry and since I'm using fresh pasta I have a little over a pound but if I need more, I do have uh, some extra, so we're just going to go with what we got right here, and we're just going to add it in. Alright, and just mix in your pasta, and you want to cook your pasta down. If you're using dry pasta, then of course it's going to take a little longer to cook, but with my fresh pasta, it's not going to take as long, but I do want my sauce to thicken up too, so cook until your sauce is thick like you like it, and your pasta is cooked. Right now you also want to taste your uh, broth while it's cooking, so if you need any more salt or Cajun seasonings or whatever seasonings you like, you can test it out. I'm just going to, because I don't need mine to be too hot, because I don't do spicy too well. Alright, so let's just let that cook your pasta and... Let your sauce reduce just a little bit there. Alright, so our pasta now has been cooking. I let mine cook for about 7 to 9 minutes here. 
and my sauce is pretty thick. I like the way it is. So now I have turned off the heat and I'm just going to add some sliced cherry tomatoes that I have here. Again, just some extra stuff that I got in my refrigerator. I'm not going to let go to waste. My dehydrator is already dehydrating shallot, so it's not going to put those in there with it. And we're just going to mix this in. I didn't put my tomatoes in there beforehand because I didn't want my sauce to be tomatoey. I just want tomatoes in the pasta. There we are, and we're going to move this to the side so we can go ahead and put this in a serving dish here so it look pretty on the table. Let's see if I can do this without burning myself. Add a little parsley on top of there, give it a little extra color. And we got our mushrooms back. We're gonna cut up these bad boys right quick. Take a couple of them and put on top. Your alkaline Cajun chicken Alfredo. All right, so now let me go find Happy here and we'll give this. Mm, yeah, well, I just tasted it, but we'll give this a taste test, so be right back. Alright, so we are all done. It's all plated up. I have plated me a happy little sample here. So, of course, I have to call him. So, honey. Yeah. <laughs> you like doing that. <laughs> I can't look in the camera for shit. Okay, so we have here our Cajun chicken Alfredo. And we're going to give it a little taste here to see what we think. Alright, here we go. Pasta by itself before the chicken. Oops, I ate it all together. It's good. Or oh, the mushroom. I like that sauce. It's very creamy. Does have a hint of uh, spice behind it, but it is Cajun, so it's meant to kick you in the ass. Mm. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> mm hmm Definitely a lot of uh, seasoning on the mushroom. So you definitely get that spice in there. But with the milk, it gives you just a little bit of sweet to help uh, balance it out just a little bit. Oh, yeah. Okay, so now you have your alkaline Cajun chicken Alfredo. It is very tasty, very spicy. You can take this to any potluck, have it for any meal to impress someone, and they will think it's great. All right, until the next video, stay happy. Uh-huh.